Okay guys, so now I'm going to go over the things I don't like about the piano. A lot of them are minor. Um, overall, I think it's a great value. Amazing sound. Sounds better than anything else I've played, even two or three thousand dollars more. Um, but the things I don't like, starting with the case, or the, the actual build. I know I said earlier that the case is great, it looks really nice. And that is true, but the construction of the case is kind of cheap. Um, the main thing I didn't like was the bar that goes across the bottom of the piano that holds your pedals is pretty much 100% press board stapled together with hot glue gun. I don't know about you, but you know, for over a thousand dollars, they could have put some real wood down there and, you know, use some real wood glue or something to actually give it some strength. And when you're pedaling, you will notice that bar that's that wood bar that's holding your pedals actually twists a little bit because of, you know, the pressure on the pedals and it makes a little bit of creaking noises and it really is kind of lame. They should make a better case, especially down there. Make it out of real wood. Spend another 10 bucks, 20 bucks. You know, the customer's paying over $1,000. Make a decent strength case, not press board. Um, there is a little adjustable foot that you can thread out that will basically support underneath the pedals. So especially if you have like hardwood floors or a hard floor, you can spin that down until it touches the floor. So that way when you're pedaling, it doesn't twist on you at all and move. But the other thing I didn't like was the pedals themselves are a little wobbly. And I I did have some feedback on this from uh, piano shops and stuff like that. Dealers, they would tell me, oh, that's why we don't carry Roland, because they don't make real acoustic pianos and their pedals are all wobbly. And while I don't care that they don't make real pianos because their digital pianos sound better to me than everyone else's, um, they should do a better job on the pedals of making them a little stiffer. The pedals are too wobbly. It's not something I notice personally. But someone who's played real pianos all their life would probably get annoyed with the wobbly pe uh, pedals. They just have too much play left to right when you're pedaling. They could easily make the pedal mechanism a little more decent so it's stiffer and doesn't move all over the place. Um, and then if we go on... Okay, so the other, the other thing I didn't like was this keyboard and a lot of the newer keyboards, uh, HP line, the newer HP line and the, the RP line like this on the newer RPs is they have Bluetooth, built-in Bluetooth connections. And the Bluetooth is supposed to enable you to run this Piano Partner 2 app without any wired connection. It's supposed to be wireless Bluetooth, obviously. And in some cases it allows um, Bluetooth audio, which allows you to stream your audio from the piano to, let's say, an iOS iPad or an Android device and record the audio with no physical wiring connecting the two. But when it comes to their software, their software is actually absolutely terrible with Bluetooth. Um, it does not connect to the piano. And if you pay, you know, this is a multi-billion dollar international company, and they can't even produce an app uh, for iOS, or actually the iOS app supposedly works, but they can't produce an app for Android that will connect to their piano. So, you know, that's pretty lame if you ask me. Uh, you start up the app, you go on there, you tell it to search for a Bluetooth connection, and I know I have the piano set correctly to broadcast Bluetooth. You go in there, set it up, you tell it to search for the piano, and it searches and searches and searches and never finds the piano, ever. I've double and triple checked everything. And I know the Bluetooth on the piano itself works because you can go into the Bluetooth settings on the tablet and manually connect it to the piano and it pops up as an input device and connects immediately. But their app can't even find their own piano. So that's a huge fail for me. I don't know why they even bother advertising it. Um, the other thing is really poor documentation for connecting uh, the USB MIDI and also USB audio, but the USB MIDI is what you need to connect your tablet so that you can use the app with the piano. And nowhere in their documentation does it state that you need an OTG adapter, which is a special USB adapter that tells your device that it can control what's being plugged in on the USB port instead of just, you know, taking data in and out. And um, nowhere in the app, when you look in the app specs, it says that you need a USB adapter, but it doesn't say anything about needing an OTG adapter. And most people would think, oh, you just need an adapter for the USB cable because on the back of the piano, it is a USB-B port, which is the type you would find on a printer. It's not a regular flat USB like this. And so it makes it sound like you need an adapter to plug into the back of the piano, 
you know, to get a USB up here, and then voila, you just switch over to a micro and plug it into your tablet. But without an OTG adapter, it doesn't work. Um, and their their in depth online guide is also lacking in information, and it doesn't tell you that you need the OTG adapter. So that's a complete fail right there. Multi billion dollar company can't even get their instructions complete. Um, I did contact them about this when I was first trying to connect it to see if I needed this adapter before I bought one after searching three hours on the internet to figure out that that might be the problem. And it took them a month to talk to a piano technician and get back to me and say, oh yeah, in fact, you do need an OTG adapter. So, huge fail there. Um, the back of the piano output has one analog output, which is basically a, a three and a half millimeter stereo jack uh, that you can go to, you can run out the speakers and stuff. I'm running that right now through an adapter cable into my H4N recording device which works great. I wish that there was a digital output on the back of this piano. You're paying 1500 plus dollars. They could have put a USB digital audio output on the back of the piano very easily. There's already a USB MIDI output on the back that's digital. You know, why couldn't they put the USB audio output? The whole synthesizer in here, it's digital. So putting the digital output would not have required any extra hardware. All it would have been was a couple extra wires going back to a plug. It's that simple. Okay, so the last two little things I didn't like about it, about this piano, was there is no way to record multiple tracks um, within a song. So the, the piano offers onboard recording, but you can only record one track. So you can have a dual voice, and you could play two voices at the same time and record onto that one track, but in many cases, you need to have your tracks separated because like I was explaining earlier, when you pay a, play a violin, you don't play it the same way you play a piano. So you need to be able to layer tracks. And I've played $600 Casios that allow you to have three and four tracks or subtracks per recorded song. And I don't know why Roland only offers you the ability to record one track per song, but that's kind of a down for me. Um, I am using software now on the tablet. It only cost me like 15 bucks that allows me to record as many tracks as I want and layer and edit them all live. So it's not a deal breaker for me. But it would be nice if Roland would think about that and say, hey, you know, maybe someone wants to record two or three tracks at home and they don't have a digital audio converter like I do. Let's give them the ability to record two or three tracks within the onboard songs at a time. Um, the only other thing I didn't like was the voices. When you're playing the non-piano voices, there's only, to me, it only seems like there's three different volumes for a given voice, and I'll show you right now what I mean. I'm going to just select the cello here. Um, when you're playing back non-piano voices, the piano voices themselves have a really good dynamic range, and there's five, according to their specs, there's five different sensitivity levels for the keys to sense. And there's pretty much, in between that range, it's, it's very hard to discern any difference. When you play really soft and you slowly incre increase pressure, the instrument changes, the piano changes in volume accordingly. But with non-piano voices, it only seems like there's three different volumes. There's a soft volume, a mid volume, and a high. And when you play the key in between those different volumes, there isn't really any change or intercalation with the volume of the instrument. So if I want to play the cello soft and then slowly increase up to the mid range, you know, as I'm as you're playing a piece of music, you don't just change from soft to mid, and then mid to loud, or loud to soft, you need to be able to gradually change, and that's why you have different sensitivity levels for the key pressure. But with non-piano instruments, there's only what it seems like three, and I don't know why the onboard synthesizer does not interpolate. I don't care if there's only three recorded samples, it should be able to interpolate between those samples and give you a medium point at any place. So if you play the key at 35%, you should hear 35% blended samples. But when you play, you 
you don't get as many levels that you can physically use on the keypad back through the instrument. So it's very difficult when you're playing non-piano instruments to control the volume. You might lighten up your playing as you go down, you know, notes on, let's say, a violin, and then all of a sudden the voice will drop out and go super low to where you almost can't hear it because it doesn't graduate smoothly between the different levels. So that's the only other thing I didn't like about the non-piano voices, but in my case it's not a deal breaker because I'm usually using the piano voices and when I am using other instruments to record into my multi-track editor, I can go back and adjust the volume of the tracks later independently. So if it's too soft, I can just go in there and bump it up. But it does present a problem if you were playing live with a band or something, or at a church or wherever, if you're trying to control the volume as you're playing, it's difficult to keep the volume where you want it. Very difficult. Um, I accidentally will play too soft, accidentally play a little bit too loud. And we're not talking a little bit too loud, we're talking way too loud, because all of a sudden the volume goes from 50 up to 90, and there's no there's no in-between. So anyway, that's about it. Overall, for the, for the money, it's a very good value. Um, in Casio, there is something close to this dollar range, but it does not have the realism and the acoustics that the Supernatural engine on this provides. Um, the Yamaha Clavinos start at about $2,500 and up, somewhere around $27 and up, and depends on where you live in the U.S., it's about $27 and up. So they're a good $1,000 more than this, and they don't offer the acoustics, that realistic overtones that this offers as far as the piano voices. Um, and in the Kawaii line, I really like the, the tone of the Kawaii's and the timbre of the notes. To me, the timbre of the Yamaha's is a little bit too metallic, a little bit too much string noise, but that's just a preference. Even the real, even real Yamaha pianos for me, the timbre's a little bit too sharp. Uh, the quality, the quality of the note has nothing to do with it. It's the character of the note. Um, the character of the Kawaii's I like more. But the Kawaii started about $3,500 for a good feeling, realistic key bed. So to get a good Kawaii voice and a realistic keyboard, you got to pay $3,500 or up. Um, and once again, the acoustics, those overtones, semitones, and all that stuff created by the cabinet of the piano are not as realistic as the acoustic piano would be, and this is to me. So that's why I decided to go with this. Hope this helped you guys out. Thanks for watching.